Mr. Popsit here. Thanks for checking out my channel. Make sure to check out Mr. Popsit Live and Mr. Popsit Fishing. Two other channels. It helps the whole brand grow. I appreciate the support. Thanks for popping by. Okay guys, Greg Lynch, Stern PA, Mr. Popsit here. We have another common thing that we see, an epidermal inclusion cyst. This one's almost three centimeters, 2.5 to three. You can see the little punctum or the pore where these cysts start. They usually start from one pore, it gets clogged, dead skin and oils mixed together and make kind of keratin in there. Some people squeeze these and it'll have the white stuff that comes out. So we're gonna get her numb and we'll do a little wedge cut um, just a, an ellipse to remove that pore. And we'll get this out for her and it doesn't need to bother her anymore and it won't get any bigger. It'll be gone for good. So thanks to her for sharing. We're going to get her prepped and ready and be back in just All right, guys, Mr. Popsit here. We are ready to go. And it is under a little bit of pressure here. I'm going to do a little poke first. We can get these ones kind of cleared out. First, it shrinks the sack for us. So we're going to do a little pressure here. This might... There we go. A little bit of a popper. No pain, just pressure? Yeah, just pressure. Good. Very good. So that kind of makes the sack smaller. You can see that one shot a little bit. It's right there. Kind of goes, <laughs> they come out. That's good. We're getting that cleared out. We can come in and make a small cut and that sack will pop right out. Been juicy lately, haven't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. So I'm gonna make my small ellipse here, just like that. Break that skin at the top. There we go. So now we want to kind of tease back here around the sack so we can get under it. No, I know. There's a lot of people out there. There we go. Starting to come out here. Once I get the separations at the surface and I start going deeper, is usually when I transition to the scissors for a little bit more of a blunt dissection deeper. But sometimes there can be scar tissue and other things there. That make me come back to the blade. If you feel any sting at all as I'm getting towards the bottom, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, there's actually quite a bit left in there. We have that little skin handle at the top we always talk about. Call it the scandal. <laughs> it's a little ellipse. It gives us a little handle to kind of pull against. A lot of cyst walls are very, kind of just fall apart, very thin. Some are pretty tough, but a lot of them will just rip. And we don't want to leave anything left behind. So as we say, no cyst left behind. There's a little scar tissue, kind of very fibrous right there attached, you can see. That can happen from squeezing it in the past, which is also very common. Any pain there? No. Good. There we go. Nice little pocket there. So we'll bring that over here. 
you can see I really only got about half of that out. Cut that in half and splayed open. There was still a lot of dry cyst contents in there. And a relatively thin walled cyst sack there. So that's good. Good to have that out. That was definitely a couple centimeters. Looks like. I was thinking that might, yeah, might have been a hair in there possible there was a, a hair rolled up in there that can cause sometimes the beginning of that pore being clogged like an ingrown hair can initiate that cyst growth response so that looks good nice little pocket you can see no real big bleeders in there we'll do a little bit of cautery there's one little bit of fat here um that's bleeding in some connective tissue but they kind of carve out a nice little pocket for themselves and then we'll just close that with stitches and the fat will redistribute in time. So these are our deep sutures. A little bite here of fascia there. This just kind of helps close the pocket and give a little bit of support down deep. Funny with that TV playing on the other side of that wall. <laughs> They're gonna be like, I know that movie. It's <laughs> out. Yeah, exactly. That's good. A little bit of tension on that one. to the knot. The skin's a little thinned out towards the top. And then make sure you get that white fascia. You can see that holds really well. One more, I think, on the end. Cut that. Down, yeah, you wanna go lower than that. It's okay, it sucks back in, but you wanna go all the way down to the knot. It's okay if you hit it, we'll just redo it. <laughs> Put one, yeah, that fascia is stretching, that's what I saw. Get a deeper bite here. It's interesting to see how stretchy it is. Just need a better bite. Let me see the scissors. I'm gonna recut that one. Cause it's kind of stretching on us. There we go. Get that knot out. That's the problem of being a perfectionist. <laughs> Sit and redo things all day long. doing okay? Yeah. Good. No pain, not lightheaded? No. Good. We're almost done. Just got a couple topical stitches after this one. See that other stitch is stretching a little too because the fascia right by the surface has actually got a lot of kind of elastin fibers in it and they're stretching. So if you can go, you can kind of, here, let me show you. When you come in, go like this around both of them, go down until you feel the knot, mm -hmm. and you just turn sideways a little like that. Okay. Turning sideways pulls you a little bit away from the knot. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to cut it and it happens. cut your knot out. It happens in the beginning. I just throw stuff and then okay. throw a tantrum and then we're done. Okay. Like, nah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Throw the tree, I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on some of my rotations and surgeons. Oh. <laughs>
I have seen surgeons, grown men throw stuff at medical assistants. Yeah. It's just horrible. I've heard stories yeah. from other people. Yeah. We're going to go deep here. I'm going to get down in here and get a better bite. Let's get there. Gonna hold that pocket together better. Nice. And this area is an area that stretches, so I like to have good support on this. Watch the skin. You just don't want to get the skin. There you go. Perfect. All right. We'll do a little running stitch here. This one about a centimeter, there you go. Yep. I was thinking the other day when I was first starting out, like mm -hmm. in 2008 or nine, on YouTube, I was looking for suturing videos and mm -hmm. it actually was kind of hard to find. <laughs> and yeah. then I think, you know what? I've got like 350 so. videos. You can see so many sutures on my channel. And I get, for just that reason, it's worth doing. Yeah. <laughs> so many people want to learn how to do different types of sutures. You want to hold that? This skin to bunch up a little bit. It's called tissue eversion. That's good. That's what we like to see. You see this? Before I close that last bit, I always milk the wound, kind of push out any blood or air that's in there before I cinch it down. It's always good to do. Not too hard, yeah. <laughs> Moderately hard. She's like, ouch. <laughs> That's good. good you see that little midline right there nice and puckered up that's what we like to see we'll put a little pressure bandage on there and in time she'll barely see that little scar so that's it guys um very standard you know two to three millimeter cyst we do tons of those but what's interesting is they all have their own unique pop <laughs> you know there's different color different consistency and different amounts of pressure on every single one so they really are like a fingerprint even from the outside they look similar they all have their own unique what's inside. So thanks for popping by. Thanks to her for sharing. We did a nice little running stitch there, and we'll see her back.